Carolyn Parker. This is make us feel good. <laughs> this says no homes, no shop, boycott Brisbane. I, I feel rather insulted. Um, you know, we worked very hard here to keep Brisbane, Brisbane. Uh, we like to have a little town here. You know, we call it, uh, we are a city, but we are a little town. We're unique. There's no other place like Brisbane until we get far away from here. I mean, this is it. And I think we should continue to keep the character of Brisbane. Where else are we going to find something like this? You know, Woodacre in Marin County, um, Princeton, Half Moon Bay. You know, where where is another Brisbane? And you know, to our credit, people have fought hard to keep Brisbane Brisbane. And what are we going to do with the Baylands? I think the most important thing, as Paul said, is to expand ecology. You know, if we expand recology, then we will be covering up the dump site. Uh, we, we will be helping Little Hollywood. They will not have the kind of pollution they're having now. Um, and, and it will just increase the quality of life for San Francisco and the region. You know, it, it, it's, that's important. I think, too, if we're going to have high-speed rail come in, yeah, okay. You know, high-speed rail, we, could ha we have an opportunity to actually cap a dump site that's unregulated. They could come in, put a hardscape on it. And so if there's liquefaction or anything else that's going on, we could keep the bay cleaner. So yeah, we could work with them. We could we could work with them and ask them to help us cap the rest of the baylands. I mean, the rest of the dump site, and the, and and use it at, for entertainment. If you look at all the other unregulated dump sites, these are the dump sites from the turn of the century, nineteenth century, twentieth century, to um, you know the seventies early 70s when they finally just stopped having cars come up and just dump whatever they want into the dump site and they started regulating the dump sites. We don't know what's in them. There's no way to actually find out what's in these dump sites. The only thing we can actually do is to cap it. And we can't really, if you look at all the dump sites in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, none of them have been developed at all. They're all just, the only one that's ever been cleaned up is Mare Island. And what do they do when they cleaned it up? They put a fence around it. They put a fence around it because it was very contaminated with very, very bad toxins. You know, they, and now they have a little walking path in there. So that land, as far as I'm concerned, could never be sold, ever. I think what we need to do is kind of look at the, the picture besides just the housing. You know, what is actually good for this particular land? And, you know, how long has UPC had this land? They've, they've, built, they've built some wells. They checked the toxins. You know, not to the sufficient degree that I, as a member of the BBC uh, AGs, I, I never felt it was sufficient. You know, but they have never cleaned it up. And so now what they're saying is let's build 4,000... 460 homes on it, even though they knew when they bought it that they were going to build on Schlagelock area, and we had it in our general plan not to build housing. I agree with that plan. I still don't think we should build on area that is just contaminated. I, I, I don't think it's right for Brisbane. I don't think it's right for the whole community. I live in a condominium that has been built since in the last, it's 18 years old now. And we've had to completely rebuild it. It wasn't built well enough. Uh, and, and it's very expensive. The upkeep is terrible. Because 
you know, it was built on fill. You know, part of it was a hill and part of it was filled up. So the parts that are, are um, settled, you know, they pile-drived it and, and made it solid. But the pipes are exploding. They're actually bending and breaking constantly. And it, the upkeep is terrible. So if we're going to do that and call it low-cost housing, who's going to pay for the upkeep? You know, the people who are going to buy in it? The way that the law is now, that the people who buy into the land as it's low-cost housing, they have no opportunity, none whatsoever, to build equity. And when they buy, they're still going to be part of the condo association, and they're going to have to pay for whatever upkeep there is. So they have low cost, you know, they don't have much money, but yet they're going to build buy into condos, and those condos are going to need constant upkeep. There's no doubt about it. Because it's going to be built on fill, and it's going to be high rises, and it's just going to need lots of attention. So I don't think this is the right place to put our low-cost citizens. I think the, a better place would be right downtown. And we should be realistic about it. You know, there's, there's other places maybe that we could put low-cost housing. Let's not put it in the Baylands. Let's, let's do something that works for the Baylands. Let's put, you know, let's, let's look at it as a transportation hub, a place to put transportation vehicles. I think this is a better solution. I, I, I do want us to, and I'm sure my time's up, but I want to think about the whole picture of the whole Baylands. And I actually stand by the work that we did at the Planning Commission. I think we really studied and read through thousands and thousands of pages of documents. We all did separate projects to try to understand what's going on.